from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I hope you are all doing very, very well today. So I would like to once again acknowledge that now is November 2019, and so for those of us who are able to enjoy the Criterion Collection sale at Barnes & Noble, I hope you are enjoying yourselves. It is a very great time to be a Criterion Collection fan, and it is also wonderful to be able to purchase these titles at half price. So I hope you are enjoying. And as always, my friends, please let me know if you have made any purchases through the sale and let me know what titles you've purchased. As always, I'd love to hear what it is you bought and what films you are looking for. So speaking of the Criterion Collection, there are a number of great filmmakers, of course, that are represented through some capacity and in some degree in the Criterion Collection. There are many, many great filmmakers that are represented. And that's great because that's sort of an example of why Criterion is, is Criterion. The filmmaker that I wanted to talk to you about very briefly has two films currently in the Criterion Collection physical media catalog one of which was a very recent release. It was released um, about a month or so ago on a new Blu-ray, and it is a really magnificent work of art. I would strongly recommend, if you, if you can, uh, to, to get it. Uh, but before I go uh, be any further, let me just mention that the filmmaker in question is the filmmaker, uh, the Bengali filmmaker, Ritwik Gatak. And the film that I want to bring to your attention first, if you haven't purchased this already, is this film, which is a very recent release. This is Spy Number 993. This is the Blu-ray of the film from 1960. This is Gatak's film, The Cloud-Capped Star. The Cloud Capped Star. So this is a film uh, in Bengali and it is a black and white film. It is a film that is in essence about a family, about a, a young woman and her relationships with her family and uh, the kinds of uh, hardships and situations that she finds herself in, especially in the context of her, the relationship that she has with her brother and this idea of responsibility over individuality and what one yearns for versus what one needs to do. Those are very base terms that I've put the description of this film in, uh, but I don't want to deceive you in my description of the film, which I think is uh, inadequate. The reason why I say that is because this film holds so much splendor. It is a truly magnificent work of art. It is one that I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you try to get. It is a work that is tender. It is very honest in its depiction of the frailties and uh, feelings and thoughts and emotions of uh, the human experience, set in the context, as I say, of these relationships, these familial relationships, relationships and in particular, this brother-sister relationship that's depicted in this, uh, in this film with such tenderness and warmth. The film is so much more, though. It is at once a kind of uh, maybe realistic human drama, on the one hand. It is also a highly stylized feat of cinematic prowess, in the sense that there are so many tricks of cinema that are at play, both visually and orally, versus in the soundtrack, 
that I dare say that a lot of the techniques that are being employed here might tend to make at least some aspect of this film almost experimental in terms of its filmmaking style, which is a really interesting uh, mix, if you will, a sort of eclectic mix of style, which works marvelous, marvelously in the context of this film. In other words, we have a film that is dealing with a sort of uh, an approach to a, a realism in terms of human drama on the one hand and the, uh, the, the depiction of the tenderness and hardships that come with respect to the drama that is inherent in these universally understood human relationships on the one hand. Then on the other hand we have this style of the film which occasionally and often tends towards the experimental and the highly stylized, but uh, it always has as its focus, as its center, this notion of using cinema to heighten the drama, using cinema as a means of creating a, a poetry that serves to point or to counterpoint something that's going on in the drama. In other words, cinema and the human condition are linked uh, quite beautifully in this uh, very poetic and on the one hand very poetic film and also on the other hand quite a realistic film. So as you can uh, hopefully as I, I, what I want to try to convey to you is that this film is a mix of of seemingly differing styles, but the mixture is a, quite wonderful, and it is bold, and I think many ways innovative in terms of its visual tricks and, and sound tricks, etc., but it always keeps its focus on this beautifully depicted human drama. This is, in essence, why I really, really really love this work. I was so thrilled when I heard that Criterion was going to release this because up to then it had been very difficult to watch. It had been released on on a BFI DVD uh, but then it fell out of print and so for many years in fact it was on an out of print disc and so it was very difficult to get but now we are very fortunate because now it has been made available in this great presentation by Criterion. The Cloud Cap Star, this is spy number 993. Once again, my friends, I cannot stress strongly enough just how wonderful I think this film is. And so if you are interested in watching a, a truly moving drama, then I would... Uh, it would be my pleasure to suggest for your consideration the film The Cloud Capped Star. There is one more film that is directed by Gatak, and I mention this because it is actually part of this set right here, which is the Martin Scorsese's World Cinema Project number one. This is first of all a, a great box set which has a number of films that are just stunning, bold, and innovative, and startling to the extent that I truly believe that this box set together with the number two box set, so this is number one, there's also a number two box set, these box sets are among the best box set releases Criterion has ever made, in my opinion. I cannot recommend this strongly enough. In other words, this box set, my friends, is one of the best. And so if you get this box set during the sale, that's even better. You know, box sets are not so cheap. They're quite expensive. So to be able to get a high caliber, uh, sterling quality box set, at half price during the sale would be just great. So I strongly recommend, at the very least, to consider getting this box set. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your point of view, of course, the films that are included in this box set are not available through physical 
uh, media criterion releases individually. In other words, if you want to get these films through the criterion release, your only uh, bet is to get them in the box set. In other words, they're not made available individually, so they're only available in the box set. But that's great because you're still getting great films included in this. One of these films is the film that is given the spine number 687. And this is from 1973, and this is also uh, uh, Gatak work. The film is A River Called Titas, or A River Called Titash. This is a prime example of why I think, if you don't know the name Ritwik Gatak, then you should keep his name in your mind because at the very least my friends this film and uh, the cloud cap star i think are enough reason to keep the name gatak strongly and prominently in your mind when you're thinking of the great filmmakers of the world this film a river called titash is one of those really poignant uh, ensemble dramas that is so uh, emotionally direct on the one hand and then on the other hand it is punctuated with visual poetry that is stunning in its beauty it's awesome in its beauty it's also very heightened in terms of its melodramatic style in terms of the way that the plot almost twists and turns and yet it never loses track of the kind of attention that the film is giving to its uh, its characters and the, the breadth that it is willing to give the room that it's willing to give the characters and there's so much feeling and emotion and depth that is captured in these beautiful beautiful images that this is just a breathtaking, utterly breathtaking work of genius. A River Called Titash is so uh, moving and it's so relatable in the sense that the motivations I think are quite clear and I think there is a, a sort of uh, ability for a viewer to be able to connect immediately with the human drama, even though perhaps, you know, for instance, for me, I am not directly familiar with this geographical area of the world, and I am not directly familiar with the history of this area of the world directly, because I don't have that direct experience. Nevertheless, my friends, this film presents its characters and drama in a way that I think is directly relatable and quite uh, honest in its portrayal. And so we have a kind of, of great drama that I think, once again, my friends, I should point out that these films are operating on many, many levels, both in terms of uh, pure cinematic levels and also in terms of kind of, of uh, maybe broad historical context levels, especially in the context of the history of this area, uh, the so-called partition and the kinds of, 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 um, of effects that uh, this sort of thinking uh, would have had on a society writ large, and this is being distilled in, in one form or another in terms of human drama. So I want to try to express to you that there is so much of a kind of, uh, of inextricable link with history, with the culture of the, this part of the world, but it is also uh, universal in terms of the kind of drama that's taking place and the the emotion that is uh, uh, pouring forth from the screen uh, as you watch. So I think uh, the more one appreciates the history 
of this particular part of the world, I think the more one can find riches and rewards in these films. But uh, as examples of human drama captured on film, they also hold a lot of riches and rewards. So I hope I'm making myself clear. So in other words, the uh, if you are watching these films for the first time and you don't necessarily know uh, as much about the history uh, as maybe other people might, then perhaps after watching them, you can do your own research as to the history of this part of the world and this particular time and see uh, if that understanding of history can help also further one's appreciation for what is going on in these films uh, as a kind of concurrent line of interpretation together with one's interpretation of these films as human drama. So in other words, I think they hold so much uh, potential in terms of, of an enlightening film journey uh, for one to explore uh, at one's leisure and pace, of course. But uh, they are certainly a great place to go at the very least my friends at the very least you are getting supreme examples of emotionally charged human drama that is presented in a a profoundly poetic way so this is the cloud cap star and a river called titas or a river called titash so as i said the film A River Called Titash is only available in this box set, the Martin Scorsese's World Cinema Project number no. one, uh, but it's a great box set, so I would strongly urge that you get this box set because all the films here are great, uh, including, of course, the Gatak film. But also, there is this individual film called The Cloud Cap Star, which was a recent release by Criterion earlier this year, again, Spy 993. This would be, I would be so happy if I heard that you purchased this and watched it. And I would love to hear what your reactions are. Because as I say, I am just deeply, deeply moved by this film. And again, the more people that watch these films, the happier I will be. Okay, my friends, that's it for now. So until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. And please, please, please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. So until we meet again, my friends, cheers. <laughs>